So here we are, uh, part two. Thank you for all the people that watched part one and commented. So now we're going to have a go at painting the wagon. Now I have to say right from the very beginning, we made a little error, but we wanted to do it to make the video, which is that really all this um, under frame would have been much better painted black before you stuck it together. Um, and another time I would. So what I'm going to use here is, this is Tamiya uh, acrylic paint. Also the Humbrol acrylic is very good. This is a matte black. So we're going to just paint all this and I'm sure Douglas will probably do a time lapse to make it a little less boring. Now a couple of people have met, commented about not being very good painters. Um, I, I don't think it really matters with these. You're making them for your own satisfaction. So, so long as you're happy with the paint job, that's all that really matters. So it doesn't really matter that we've gone a little bit over there because we're going to come back down and paint all that anyway. So I've got a bit more paint than I want on these wheels, so I'm just cleaning them off. Uh, as you can see, just by wiping a piece of tissue and revolving around the wheel around them. It's not a big problem because they're not electric conductors, so it's not really going to matter. Uh, and once it's on the track, you're not really going to see it. So there we have it, that's all the underframe painted black. Oh, I've just noticed I missed a tiny bit. Let's just get in there. Um, I would definitely another time have painted it before I stuck it on. But there you go, that's one of those things. We're ready now to do the other colours. So here we go, and for the actual colour for the wagon, I'm going to use this. This is the Humbrol acrylic paint. Um, they do a couple of different ranges, works very well. So I've just got, uh, this is paint number 186, not sure which brown it is. Uh, and then we'll, again, we'll probably do this as a uh, time lapse. So there we go, that's got the body painted, quite a nice shade of brown, so that was Humbrol 186. Um, I know some people are going to talk about airbrushes and really good brushes and really good paint and lots of coats and all that sort of thing. But what I was really trying to do here is show what the the, the average new modeler can do with it, not, without, not necessarily having lots of uh, technique and everything else, because I know some people say that they can't model or paint or whatever because sometimes the experts give the impression that it's a really difficult thing to do it's not i just got paint and a brush and painted it um, doesn't matter if i've gone over the edges a little bit we can tidy that up so next we'll do the roof okay. so here we are what i've done with i've put um, a second coat on the brown just to give it a nice finish so now we're going to have a little look at the roof and this may need two coats but we'll see so this is just um Humbrol acrylic again this happens to be 67 which I think is um, dark sea grey and it does tend to cover quite nicely it's what I've used in all my other wagons um, you'll all have your own views on what what color these wagons could be and I'm sure there's probably some official colors but I tend to use what I've got um, kicking around that looks about right but obviously if you've got a particular one I quite like the the new Hornby ones which are black with white roofs that look very nice so you could do that but this is a particularly good paint this one 
Uh, the real trick when you're doing any painting is to have a nice brush, a nice soft brush, and that tends to take the brush marks out. There we go. I think we might get away with one coat there. So the little tricky bit then obviously is just to do the edges. Um, this is the sort of thing I used to be very good at, but as my eyesight's got worse over the year and I've had to use glasses, I find it a little bit trickier. So I'm just going to get quiet when I do it. I don't have to, I don't think. So just to do the neat edge there, all I'm doing is using just the edge of the brush. And the real trick when you're doing something a little bit fiddly is to have enough paint on the brush. And there we go. Just do the other bits. One of the reasons I generally prefer the Humbrol colours is the Tamiya sometimes can be a bit thin, um, whereas the Humbrol often you only need one coat. There we go. It's all practice. It doesn't really matter if you don't make a good job of it, they're your wagons. Practice makes perfect, uh, and always remember you can always paint over it and do it again. There we go. So that's the roof pretty much done. So all we've got to do now is some transfers and some weathering, and we'll have rather a nice looking wagon. So that's the underframe done there in black, the brown sides, and the grey roof. So here we go then, so what we're going to do now, we're going to try applying these water slide transfers. You don't have to do them if you don't want to, but I thought just to do a full review that it would be worth having a go. I know a lot of people use all different chemicals, they put something on before they put the transfers on and then they put the transfers in something else and then they put something else on the transfers. Um, but to keep it simple, I'm just going to use them as they originally intended. So I find these a bit difficult to see, even with glasses on. Um, I did have to have a really good look at the picture on the front to find out where they go. Um, so obviously you should most of you familiar with these but they're water slide transfers. You put them in water like that uh, and they will then slide off. Um, I use warm water, uh, it's a little bit easier. So once they begin to slide off, relatively simple, hold them roughly in position, slide the paper away. Um, you can move them around a little bit. You can use tweezers and things like that. And then once they're in the right place, dab them with tissue. Uh, and then you can see there. So we're working upside down here, so that's why it's wobbling. But you can see that on there quite nicely. So what I'm going to do now is just work on some of the others. There we go, that's got all the transfers on. Um, so next we're gonna do some weathering. You can, if you want, do things like matte varnish over the transfers to stop them shining. But I think by the time I've weathered them, they'll have blended in quite well. Right, so what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna weather this wagon. You could leave it like that, in which case it looks, I think, almost as good as the ready to run. I'm just gonna do a little dry brushing. I'm gonna use this color, uh, which is a, a light brown emulsion. The, the lighter color I've used on some of my other wagons, I think is a bit light. And you need one of these, um, which is just a short, stiff brush. You put a little bit of paint on the brush and then dab it out. I find tissue is the most absorbent thing. And then have something dark to do that. And you want to do it till there's almost no, nothing coming off the brush. And then you just gently drag it across the detail. And that colour's actually working very well. I'm going to redo my other wagons. And what that does, you can just see where it's picked all the detail out there. So we do the same again. I'm 
like that. You don't need an airbrush and all that expensive stuff. Yeah, I'm quite pleased with that actually. And then what we're going to do, we're going to do the same on the sides of the wagon to try and pick out some of the detail. And what we'll do is we'll start on the ends here where you've got all this ridge detail. Now if, I don't know if that camera picks up on that, but what you can see in, real, in normal light is that that has picked out the detail as opposed to the other side. And if you've got it light enough, what you've basically got to do is really push to get paint. And what it'll do, it just puts a light edge on all of these and everything else and it just picks the detail out. I'm quite pleased with that colour. If you want it more pronounced, use a lighter colour, which is what I've done on some of my other wagons. So there we go. Um, you can see particularly on the side there where it's picked out. Uh, I'll just try and get there we go. It's picked out all the detail. So it picks out all these raised lines and everything else. And what Doug will do in a minute, he'll do some really nice photos that show that. But you can see where it's picked up the line of the roof there um, and on the ends. So I'm actually really pleased with that little wagon. That's £5.50. I've really enjoyed making it. If I wanted four or five, I could quite happily sit there and knock those out. Um, I'm really pleased with the look of those. That's as good as some of the weathered wagons you might buy. With wagons, the cheapest now being £11. And in fact, I checked online and the standard box van like this from Hornby is now £16. £5.50, £6, even if you ended up paying 7 or 8 online, is at least half the price, if not a third of the price. So I think that's a really worthwhile little project. So as always, thank you for watching. Thank you for commenting. Please subscribe and like. Liking is in particular is really important to us. And um, Doug will now do some nice photos of the finished item. Hi, thanks for watching the video and for the nice comments. Uh, click on the left for a previous video in this series. Click on the right for another video you might enjoy. And please don't forget to click to subscribe, like, comment, etc. Thanks again.